Hello and welcome back and today we're going to take a closer look at the QNAP TS251B and how when we install a 10 GBE PCIe upgrade card, an NIC uh, network interface card for you nerds, um, what happens and what are the speeds that we can look at. So what I've done is I've installed um, QTS on the 251B, incidentally this is the new beta for two, um, QTS 4.3.5 that we'll be talking about in another video. Um, but what we're going to do is show you the speeds which you will be looking at. Now, in the background, we're going to do two kinds of tests. We're going to do a data transfer test, very briefly, and we're going to do a, um, a black magic speed test. And also give you a sense of perspective by showing you a 1GB enabled NAS, so that's a NAS that's connected to over standard network protocol, and how it compares with one that's connected over 10GBE directly. No switch in the middle, but if you do need a switch, I do recommend going for that QNAP QS W switch or the Buffalo, the um, MP2008. Now, the QNAP card retails for about 85 90 quid, and the NAS itself retails for about 240 quid. So, what we're using today is a 10 GBE card from QNAP at either end, so one that's inside the QNAP and one that's in my desktop PC. The result is that we've got a solution here for without the hard drive media or tax um, for less than 440, 450 quid, depending on where you buy. Now, in order to make this test show the total speed that you can get, I'm using two Samsung SSDs. They are 240 gig each, and I've got them in a RAID 0 environment. Now, of course, if you use hard drives, the speeds you get will vary, but you will still see speeds somewhere in the region of 300 megs uh, of read and write speed, but or more likely read. But what we'll do first is I'll show you a Blackmagic speed test utilizing a NAS using one gigabit Ethernet. So standard, bog standard connectivity. So that's going to be this one here, the S. And we're going to do a, uh, a 1 gigabit Ethernet speed test um, via Blackmagic. So straight away, our write speeds are around about the 100-odd mark, and that's exactly what we would expect over 1 GBE. You may be hearing a slight vibration there, because I've got way too many NASs on the table. Maybe I should move the microphone. I'm sorry for any noise. And hopefully that's a little bit better. I'll be honest, I've still got too many NASs on this table. So again, at standard 1GBU protocol, as you can see, we are achieving somewhere in the hundreds in terms of read and write. So now we're going to do exactly the same test, but this time we're going to be utilising 10 gigabit Ethernet on our 251B with two SSDs in RAID 0. And once again, these results will differ if you're using hard drives, but you will still get significantly higher speeds. So now, utilizing 10 GBE, we've already got four times the write speed. The read speed, not hugely higher, but that is because of Blackmagic. Blackmagic tests far more in favor of write than read. So although it seems quite strange that the read would be lower than write, that is because of the Blackmagic speed test. But so many of you out there use a NAS with 10 GBE for photo video editing, that the black magic um, speed test is kind of the go-to for you guys with your big files. But straight away, those write speeds being four times higher than that of 1 GBE is definitely something that you 1080p and even early 4K video editors will take advantage of to edit on your NAS remotely, but of course using 10 GBE. And once again, you can run 10 GBE via a 10 GBE switch and then into the NAS from your PC or directly connect your NAS to your host machine over 10 GBE if you have a 10 GBE port or maybe a Thunderbolt 10 GBE adapter. So that was our speed test for that. Next, let's look at direct file transfer using Windows, something nice and basic. So for you, those of you that caught my um, videos a while ago, I'd created 35 gig of basically random files. And these random files were everything, videos, photos, um, CSV files, Word docs, PDFs, the works and it was 35 gig to bench test the speed of SSD caching. Now we're gonna use those same files here and we're gonna show just, just 30 seconds worth the speed that we will get by transferring that 35 gig of files over, here we go, over here. And we'll transfer our test files, copy, into the one gigabit file. Ignore the fact it says 10 GB test but we're going to look at the read and write speeds of transferring this. So straight away, we're hitting that limit. 
So for a direct file transfer, we are looking at 100 megs. And again, if you're editing small files on the NAS over the network, then these sort of speeds will be okay. And again, this is pretty much all right right now. Once we transfer it back, we'll be able to look at those read speeds and what kind of speeds we're looking at there. So if we leave that going just for a little bit longer, what I'm gonna do is then read from the NAS and deposit those onto a directory on my local machine to show what the speed will be coming back. As you can see, some more denser files that it's come across, it's obviously working a little bit harder. Um, so now I'm just gonna cancel that there and stop it moving, and then I'm gonna copy these files and move these back to my host machine. So we're gonna create a new folder in here. We're just gonna call this, uh, you know, lots of random um, directories there. We're just going to call this one results. We're going to open that bad boy up. And now we're going to now read from the NAS to copy these files over to our local directory. And we're going to paste these files over. Let's have a look. So again, read speed pretty consistent we're maxing out those hard drives and now we're copying from here onto our local thing uh, our local directory now do bear in mind although it says 35 gig we have not copied 35 gig of files onto this NAS what we've actually copied because we cut the test short is again around three maybe even four gig once that's finished counting so again read and write wise we saw speeds of somewhere in the region of 90 to 100 megabits per second so now we're going to do exactly the same tests, but this time utilizing the 2.1b with 10 GBE connectivity. So again, we'll do a little folder there. We'll call that one 10G files. And again, we're going to start moving those files just like we did last time. Copy, open up on our 10G device, and we're going to have a look at those speeds and straight away. Look at those lovely speeds there. We're immediately looking at the 400 megs. Now, once again, for the naysayers watching this video that go, huh, that's not fair, you're using SSDs, they're faster. It doesn't matter in this scenario because we aren't testing the speed of our media. We are testing the speed of the bandwidth between the NAS and our editing machine. We could be using the fastest SSDs in the world, but if we were connected over one gigabit ethernet, we will not see speeds higher than 100 odd megabytes per second because one GBE will act as a bottleneck. 10 GBE is about removing the bottleneck between the NAS and your host machine and thereby enabling read and write. And as you can see, in the small time we've been talking, we're over 50% done sending 35 gig of files from our local machine here to our 10 GBE NAS. So again, the speed is phenomenal. Once again, these are the sort of speeds which allow live editing. And once again, the reason why the 251B and two 10GBE cards are just ideal for a photo video editor. And again, if you put hard drives inside this, you will see, see similar speeds. You will see some great speeds as long as they're in the correct RAID configuration for you. Although hard drives won't reach this height unless you're utilizing at least four drives in a RAID 10 or RAID 0 environment. And again, just to make it completely fair, we're gonna copy those files right the way back, put those back there. We're gonna pop them into that results folder, paste them over, and again, this is where the RAID 0 shows the slight difference we're using two SSDs, because although we're not seeing now the read speed as high, once again, this is because of those SSDs and that RAID environment. Still, nevertheless, it's significantly higher than that of one GBE, and that's really the point. It's the idea that with the application of a simple 80 to 90 to quid 10 GBE upgrade card on both the NAS, if it's got a PCIe slot, and your host uh, PC, you will be getting these sort of speeds. Now, there are other ways that you can improve read and write speeds, things like SSD caching, where you utilize an SSD in your NAS, where it kind of creates duplicates of commonly accessed files to improve read and writes, and of course, uh, you can go to 40 GB and we will be doing a 40 gigabit Ethernet speed test utilizing a QNAP NAS and a couple of their new 40 GB cards. But thank you so much for watching. I'm going to wrap things up here and get ready for the QTS 4.3.5 uh, beta video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.